Hello, this is yours truly with non-existent and interdimensional productions presenting to you the lost mail which wasn't really lost just late. Cassette master who could use a cup of coffee but doesn't have coffee being made right now is going to be presenting to you the first impressions of a device that I have gotten the mail today this is a device that I bought off of a site, not eBay, but another site called Etsy, which also sells things. And um, it is a very special machine. Hopefully, it will uh, be all right in condition. It was not didn't seem to have been packed all that well, but hopefully, it uh, survived. It arrived a couple of days late. It was meant to come on the 24th, and it came today. The 24th was a Saturday, and it came today on Tuesday. Well, the machine itself... Yeah, the shipping... The cover to the case comes off with utmost ease. Maybe the cover was meant to come off like that. Considering the pictures I've seen on, yeah, the, I can tell the cover was meant to come off like that. The cover is slightly damaged, but that's just wood, and really is it not that big a deal. The machine itself, though, also, well seems somewhat damaged, but more in the sense that it has a missing screws, so a plate is not being held in place. But other than that, the uh, obviously the machine itself looks like it survived. It looks like all the vacuum tubes are in place, and none of the vacuum tubes have fallen out, thank goodness. Belt even seems like it's still intact, and the flywheel moves. Now you probably don't really see much right now, tonight, of what's in here. Not only that, but the back of it is facing the viewer. So I'll have to take the bat and the machine out of here. The case will need to get a little bit of love and care. But the machine will definitely, sure will need to have some restoration work because I don't expect the original capacitors to be good. So you all may be one. well of course you might be wondering, supposedly, except of course the, video, the title already exists. And I already gave a YouTuber Databits the spoiler because, oh, the, oh wait, the whole thing, the case is completely separate, I guess. The bottom of the case and the machine's chassis are separate. See, I expected this all to be one unit. But I'm guessing that it's meant to just be the bare bones machine in the case. So, I have to take this out more carefully. Databits, I gave him hints in a comment. And then when I started getting pessimistic and afraid that the thing might not ever come in the mail because I wasn't receiving any updates from the tracking number since the 20th and it was supposed to come on Saturday and didn't come, I started getting really pessimistic thinking, oh, it's never going to come. I'm not meant to have this cool, rare machine. So I thought I'd go ahead and send him a spoiler comment just in case I never got it. Well, day after I send a spoiler comment, I get the machine in the mail. And this is as is condition. And it's a most incredible looking device. In a sense, it's a tape recorder. Now, you'll be looking at this thing and thinking, what on earth? Let's take a closer look. You'll think, what the heck? You'll see it's got freaking film like a movie projector except it's not on a, on a traditional film reel it's just wrapped around and you'll see it comes goes in a continuous loop comes out of the middle out of the middle just like an 8 track and then you'll see that um, the film is clear so clearly there's no pictures there's no motion picture on this film and also it's not a blank film so it, it's not an optical recorder. It doesn't optically record on the film. Plus, if you were to optically record like a telephoto phone, you'd have to develop the film. 
but this machine records and plays back. Well, obviously it's not magnetic film because it's not coated with the ferric oxide. So ultimately what this machine is, is a embossing type recorder. So, of course, everyone has heard of Thomas Alva Edison's phonograph. And of course, people out there will think that Thomas Alva Edison invented sound recording, but he did not. That was Edouard Leon Scott de Martinville in France in the 1850s. But that's beside the point. Embossing machines such as this one are similar to the phonograph. This is a Dictaphone Travel Master Dictabelt recorder. It embosses audio onto a groove much like a phonograph does. The difference though is a phonograph and a record cutter will carve away at the recording material as the recording is being made. Embossing simply makes an impression but does not carve anything away so you don't have to worry about all that swarf. Well, this machine embosses audio onto 35 millimeter film, which is quite remarkable. And I was doing reading up on this format. I, I stumbled upon the existence of this format lot, uh, not long ago. I was online, and I think I was searched something along the lines of military wire recorder or military tape recorder or something because I'm interested in mil spec machines I'd love to be able to find a more interesting military grade uh, tape recorders and wire recorders and so forth and I found a PDF eyesed version of a manual that had it was from the US Navy I believe and it had a bunch of different uh, audio recording machines um, intercoms, amplifiers stuff for the signal core and unfortunately it did not have my military wire recorder like that one in there and there was another military wire recorder that I'm familiar with that was used to record a uh, communications in, uh, in airplanes and it didn't have that one in it either for some reason even though they existed at the time the book was written but it did have a very interesting machine called the record graph film recorder and that just caught my attention because it was one of those weird oddball machines you can see one of the vacuum tubes is angled hopefully uh, nothing happened with the tube Never mind, it's not really angled, it was just the angle I was looking at it. It's a differently shaped tube. I think all the tubes are intact. I don't think any of them are broke. And actually, the cause the condition of the electronics inside looks to be quite good. I don't see rust, which is fantastic. There is a bent screw here, but then again, that's just a screw. Um, I don't think that's a big deal. Luckily, this truck changing mechanism is all metal gearing, so I don't think that's going to have problems. And it all looks to be well made. Anyway, that, I digress. So I looked in that book and I found the re a record graph machine in that uh, talked about in that book in great detail. And then I did more, and I see a paper capacitor in plain sight that tells me already it's going to have to be recapped. But, um, so I don't really necessarily want to turn it on right now. Although it might be tempting to power it up on a Variac. But I probably want to check the electrolytics first. But, um, and my workbench still isn't built. But once it is, I'll be able to uh, officially get in to really work on this machine. Okay, I, I, I really, I really digress a lot in my speech. I must apologize for my digression. I found that this uh, model machine record graph machines had historical significance. They were used during World War II. They had a relatively short time, mainly in the 1940s. The format was first invented in the late 1930s. Um, I don't think machines were being produced commercially until probably 1940 or maybe 1941. And 
These machines, of course, were state-of-the-art before they were taken over by wire recorders and then tape recorders. And what really makes these state-of-the-art isn't just that they were a recording machine other than a record cutter, but these machines could continue... Oh my gosh, the film is cracked. That's not good. Um, these machines could continually, continuously record for two and a half hours. No machine, no recording machine existed at the time except for very early wire recorders that could, uh, that could record for such long lengths of time. And even then, most wire recorders probably recorded only for an hour or so. At least this wire recorder here, which is from this one from 1948, but I wouldn't be surprised if this model wire recorder had been being manufactured earlier on. Ignore the box on top, that goes to a, a new smartphone. But um, this machine would only record for one hour continuously, which isn't bad. But at the time this was made, most recording machines you could get would be record cutting machines. And of course, you know, record, uh, record especially running at 78 RPM and even the slower ones, aren't going to record for that long. But this machine could record for two and a half hours non-stop to, um, onto one piece of 35 millimeter, well, a 50 foot roll of 35 millimeter film. And it would run into continuous loop and, so this has a lot in common with the 8-track format. That is, like the 8-track, it runs into continuous loop. Excuse me for a second. Um, I don't even really exactly remember where I was. But these machines, um, yeah, that was unheard of, the two and a half hour recording time. It's quite something, and it has a lot in common with 8-tracks, and that it runs in the continuous loop. And you have over, on this one, over a hundred tracks along the length, along the width of the film. Now, on closer inspection of this film, it looks like it might actually be blank. It looked like it had some grooves on there, but when I ran my fingernail across there, I didn't, it didn't feel like it had any recordings on it. So this might, believe it or not, actually have blank film on it. The downside with that being that there wouldn't be any cool recordings to transfer, but the, obviously the upside is that means the broken piece of film didn't affect old recordings, and if I can fix, if I can mend the film and the film is still in good enough shape otherwise, I could actually use this film to make fresh recordings. Now, um, unfortunately the needle, the playback needle looks like it's uh, been butchered. But it looks like the recording needle is still intact. If we look carefully in the transport mechanism, you can see a needle aiming down onto the film at an angle. I believe that is the recording needle. Then, this piece here can move freely, like this. That would have the playback needle on it, but I think the playback needle is broken off. Downside is that it's gone. The upside is, is well, playback needles aren't hard to get. Just a regular old cartridge for a record player would work. If the recording needle was broken, that would really be a problem. Anyway, I found out online that these types of machines were used to record the D-Day invasions. These kind of machines recorded um, the Nuremberg Trials, stuff like that of historical significance. I'm not dare plugging this thing in. I'm guessing uh, the picture on the line the meter was lit showing that the machine had been powered on that must have been done a while ago because at this stage of the power cord is I mean look at that that's just bad that power cord is going to have to get replaced I could probably use the old plug it's got the two fuses but um, the power cord is going to have to be replaced and then of course it's going to have to be recapped and the amplifier is going to need to get lubrication. I mean, excuse me, the mechanics are going to have to get lubrication and cleaning. And then, of course, the needle. I'm going to have to find a um, 
I can get a, a record player stylus to replace unless I can somehow get an actual needle and put a new needle inside the playback head. And then the you can see the counter here for the tracks. It's a three digit counter because you got just a little bit over a hundred tracks total. And so you can actually select the track. Although normally there would actually be, I believe, a me uh, metal pieces at the edge um, each time the film goes around that would cause a machine to automatically um, use this motor, this small motor here with this gearbox to um, select the next track. Which is pretty amazing. So it's, oh, it's very similar in that sense in the continuous loop and multiple tracks since it's very similar to an 8-track cartridge in that sense yet coming roughly 20 years before the 8-track cartridge. You can even see the belt is still intact. It's a felt belt or some kind of a fiber belt. So that's good news. The belt's still good, literally. So, um, and all the tubes are intact, which is good. So, this is just a first impressions video. I'm going to look more at the playback needle, or it's supposed to be a playback needle. Between those two screws, you can see a small little hole thing. I'm thinking, I bet the playback needle itself simply stuck out of that. So, perhaps the original cartridge is still good. Maybe I just need to find a needle that I can shove in there. This machine, from what I read online, had some interesting features. Automatic level control was around for many years before cassette recorders incorporated them. This machine here has an automatic voice control feature, which would automatically adjust the recording level. And then, here is the audio troll, which would adjust the sensitivity of a voice activation feature where the presence of an audio signal would cause a machine to automatically start and then once the audio signal goes away the machine would stop and I read online that it well read online from like an old article <laughs> from the 40s that it has a solenoid system so that the flywheel would constantly be turning and then the uh, a system would engage um, uh, mechanism that would cause the uh, drive sprocket here to turn so you'd have a nice smooth starting and stopping of motion and then um, anyway you have a microphone jack radio jack line tap which is interesting and then a jack for a carbon microphone and then on this model it actually has a battery box in the back where you'd have to put batteries to supply a DC, a smooth, pure DC power to power the carbon microphone. And this is the earlier model because later models had uh, did not have a battery pack for the carbon microphone, but had to use external power for a carbon mic. So um, this is, of course, just a first impressions video. I'm not going to be restoring this machine just yet because I have yet to have a proper workbench. I'd rather not work on it on the floor. I'd rather wait until I have a proper workbench set up before I delve into this special film recorder. But I thought I'd go ahead and upload a video of this machine for all interested parties out there. I don't know if this is supposed to be a manufacturing date. I'm not sure. If it was, it would be from 1952, although these machines were commonly used, well, had their usage in the 1940s, so it might be older. Being the earlier model, it's probably even more likely from the 1940s. I'm not sure if that is the manufacturing date or if it's something else. But it's made by the Frederick Hart and Company Incorporated Record Graph Model A 
serial number 54201284. So apparently they made a lot of these things at one time. Although these weren't used by consumers. I believe these were used by uh, government, by the government and police stations and courthouses and mm, perhaps radio stations and um, other commercial type use users. And it's also a mill spec machine. It was, or at least the, uh, that signal core book I looked at earlier was all mill military equipment and this was one of the things that was mentioned. So it's quite a uh, machine indeed and um, hopefully I hopefully the restoration will be successful hopefully this machine will be able to be uh, brought up to um, operational condition. I also ordered a brand new um, roll of well, new old stock from the 1980s of clear leader film, which should work with this machine. Splicing is probably not going to yield the results you'd originally get, because I'm just going to use cellophane tape. But um, anyway, hopefully this this film recorder will be able to be restored. But then again, it may be a while before future videos come of this machine's progress because this is just a uh, introduction just a in, you know, just a first impressions video of unboxing the machine itself and introducing it to the world of YouTube because there are no YouTube videos of these machines currently unfortunately the box did suffer some damage during shipping course it was not packed all that well but the damage to the box does not concern me very much just as long as the machine itself isn't damaged and um, this here isn't damaged it's flaking and flapping around like that that is just missing screws which I believe were already missing for some reason I guess a previous owner had removed the screws that retained this uh, film holster so hopefully I'll be able to um, find some screws that will fit it to hold that on. And I was also amazed by the condition of the actual speaker inside. You probably can't see the speaker very well, but it's in remarkably good shape considering its age and how easily accessible it could have been to being damaged.